What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm gonna be doing a q and I asked you guys on Instagram and on Twitter to ask me some questions to answer and you guys sent in a lot more questions than I thought were gonna get sent in. So in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and go through all of these and answer some of my favorite ones. So before we start this video, make sure to subscribe and like, it really does help this channel grow. We're approaching 3000 subscribers which is awesome. Uh, thank you to every single one of you that subscribes. It really means the world to me. If you guys have any questions you want me to answer in future videos, leave them in the comment section below. If I get enough questions, I'll definitely make a second part to this video. Not waste any time, let's get, let's get right into it. I got a bunch of questions asked uh, that I wanna go through and just answer. I have all of them right here on my computer. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So the first question, not really a question, but behind the scenes question mark, please. Um, yes, that's how I'm answering that question. Yes, there are, will be a lot more behind the scenes coming. I just recently picked up a second camera and now that I have a second camera, I can use one of the cameras to exclusively shoot behind the scenes. How do you pitch shoot ideas to people if you don't have friends willing to model for you? So this is a good question because I was in this position when I first started. And what I mean by that is I, I, want, I had a lot of ideas and I just didn't really have anyone to shoot with. and. It's kind of hard when you don't really have like a following to work with a lot of people and to collaborate with a lot of people because they don't know who you are. If you don't really have a following or a portfolio, people don't really know what you're about. So the first way of going about this is just make sure you have a portfolio, make sure you have some photos ready for when someone asks you what you shoot, you can show them your work. Um, and how do you go about like pitching the ideas? Have like an introduction, be like, hey, this is who I am. This is the kind of work that I do. Send them a portfolio and then be like, this is a concept that I wanna shoot with you and then send them like a mood board and then wait for them to reply. You wanna make sure that you have a concept set up so you're just not you know, asking a random person to take photos of them. And then they go like, oh, what kind of photos are we taking? And you're like, I don't know, I just wanna take photos of you. That's kind of weird. So just make sure you have a concept in mind. And then if they like the concept and they like your work, they'll do it with you. If not, you know, don't bug them. It's, it's not the end of the world. Go on to the next person. But yeah, that's how I go. That's how I went about it in the beginning. What inspires you to create the type of work that you create? So this is a good question because I get asked this a lot and I'm not one to get into like a super deep conversation about my work because I don't want to come off as pretentious and I don't want to seem like I'm a lot better than I actually am. I want to maintain some humility. Um, but what makes me create the kind of photos and the kind of work that I do is the feeling I get when I listen to certain songs. Two specific songs that come to mind, my favorite songs ever are Perfectly Out of Place by Dreams We've Had, Cannons by Youth Lagoon, and then 1692 by, uh, was like something Cottonwood, Fleetwood, something, I'll have the, it's, I don't know the name of it, it's a weird name, but really, really good songs. I absolutely love the way they make me feel. I can't really describe it. It makes me sad and happy at the same time. And, that inspires me to make photos that make people, you know, feel something, but something that they can't put their finger on, you know, something that they can't quite explain and leaves you kind of wondering. I want my photos to be interpreted differently by every single person. You know, I don't want it to be like a blatant, like, like I don't want the symbolism to be too like precise. So what inspires me is, is the mysterious feeling I get when I listen to those three songs I just named off. I don't know if I really answered your question, but I try my best. How would one go about crediting another photographer for inspiration? I feel like as long as you're not blatantly ripping off someone, you don't really need to credit them for getting inspired by them. If you're making a, a direct copy of one of their photos, obviously give them credit because at that point, it's not really inspiration. It's plagiarism, you know, so um, or replica replication, whatever you want to call it. But unless you're like directly copying someone, you don't need to really be like crediting them, I don't think. What are some fog machine alternatives you'd recommend? So I get asked this question a lot. Well, one of the questions I get asked a lot is what do I use for the haze? I use a fog machine. You can get them for really, really cheap. And honestly, I would stay away from like the haze sprays because I've read some pretty nasty things about them. I've read that they leave like a residue on all of your gear. And for the amount of money you pay, you don't really get that much spray to begin with. So you're not getting much pay for your spray. So save some money and get yourself a fog machine instead. Hope that answered that question. Next question. What camera do you use? I use the Sony a6400. I just picked up the Sony a7 III and I also have a new film camera, the Nikon N50. Those are the cameras I use. I'm a Sony boy. I really like my Sony cameras and I'm probably gonna continue with Sony for the rest of my life, hopefully. So Sony, if you're watching this, let me be your ambassador. You know, I got some heat for you. 
send me some free gear and I'll send some heat back, you know? What are, ooh, this is a really, this is a really, really good one. What are your thoughts on the moment Cindy Bloom and Prism FX Dream FX filters? So the people over at Prism FX actually sent me the Dream FX filter. It's not on right now, it's on my other lens. This is my other lens that I'm using, um, but it's, they're really good. I've been using the uh, Prism filter for probably like the last month. All, most of my work in December, was shot with the uh, Dream Effects, so it's super dope. I can't really vouch for the Moment Cine Bloom because I've never actually tried it myself. From what I've seen, I feel like the Cine Bloom over blooms it. You know, it, all it takes is like a little bit of light and it blooms the entire image. Whereas the Dream Effects and the Tiffin are more like localized around that, like the halation is just around the light and doesn't really affect the rest of the photo. That's what I've personally seen. I could be wrong and. Um, but I, I, I won't, I can't really talk about the Cine Blooms too much until I get my hands on it and try it myself. What are some tips you have for new photographers? So I consider myself a new photographer. I've only been shooting for about a year. You know, that's a lot of people don't believe me, but my current style and my way of doing photography as I do now, I've only been doing that for about a year. Before last year, all I did was gym photography and gym videography, which is completely different from what I do now. But a tip I have for new photographers and something I wish I would have known right off the bat is understand how light works. If you understand how light works, you will be unstoppable. The reason is because you're not shooting a subject, you're not shooting an object, you're not shooting a model, you're shooting the light that's bouncing off of them. What I mean by this is you can have the most beautiful model in the world but if you're in a dark room, you're not getting any good photos because there's no light there. You need to know how to manipulate light. You need to know what the purpose of the light you're using is. And you need to just have confidence in your lighting ability. Once you master lighting, you'll be unstoppable. Like I said, another tip, tip number two, I would have for new photographers is to shoot as much as you can. The more you shoot the one, the better you're going to get familiarized with your camera and two, the faster you'll develop your own style and you'll learn you know, the faster you'll learn photography as a whole. So when you get your camera, shoot it as much as possible. Even if it's just like boring stuff around the house, just get familiar with your camera and get familiar with light and then you'll be good to go. What are the greatest obstacles you've faced and how did you overcome it? So really good question. Loving these questions, by the way. Uh, shout out to everyone who submitted any questions. One of the biggest obstacles I faced was lack of support. I come from a small town in Wisconsin and in my small town, I didn't really have a lot of support for my photography whatsoever. I started a photography page, no followers. I had like a hundred followers. This was back in 20, early 20, like late 2019, something like that. Almost no followers. And not having support for your work makes you feel like your work isn't worth anything, which is, isn't true. You should never base your, your value off of numbers, especially from the internet. Um, but I think my biggest obstacle was definitely that having like a lack of support. And the way I found and the way I got around it and the way I kind of got more confident in my own photography was just posting on social media. Because once you post on social media, you're bound to find people that like your work and you're bound to find your audience. And once you find your audience, you'll just get more confident in your work and you'll start producing work a lot better and you'll just, you'll feel confident about yourself. And obviously that does come with, you know, just numbers, I guess, but it's also more, more so just knowing that the work you're putting out is being liked by other people and that makes me want to make more work. So that was my biggest obstacle I ever faced with my photography was just not really knowing if what I was making was good enough. What are you truly afraid of? That's a really good question. Um, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm just truly afraid of failing. Like I, it was so crazy for me to just get up and move across the country. And if I fail, I would have done all that for nothing. I would have left all I left in Wisconsin, which wasn't much, but I would have left all that for nothing. And I feel like I'm in a point in my life where I just, I don't see myself failing, but my biggest fear is definitely, uh, definitely, definitely just putting in so much effort and so much work into this craft and then having it just not become something. But as you guys can see, it's slowly becoming something, which is awesome. So not too scared of that uh, anytime soon. Do you have any regrets? If so, what have you learned from them? So one of my biggest regrets in life was just not pursuing the things I truly wanted to pursue because of the fear of having other people judge me. What I mean by this is I used to be an artistic kid when I was little. I loved to paint. I loved to draw. I loved to do stuff like that. But 
as I got older, you know, once you grow up, you kind of try and fit in and you try and follow with what the crowd is doing. And the crowd wasn't doing that. The crowd wasn't all about the artistic stuff. And um, because of that, because I, I was trying so hard to fit in, I was just like, oh yeah, art sucks, uh, art's boring. It really isn't. And I wish my biggest regret in life was sucking up to people that genuinely did not care about me and genuinely did not care about what I wanted to do. And looking back at it, you know, I, I ba essentially cut off a lot of people that I used to be friends with just because I'm never going to see them again, man. Like, it's just one of those things where true friends will support you no matter what. And I have my small circle of friends that truly support me and truly want to see me grow and truly want to see me succeed. My biggest regret is just definitely being around a circle of people that didn't value what your aspirations were and clowned you if what your aspirations were were different from theirs so um, if you guys are watching this and you're young screw what everyone says i promise you once you grow up none of what you did in your teen years like with your friends and stuff is going to matter towards like your life goal if you want to be an artist be an artist what anyone says do what you want to do because this is your life everyone else is just living in it and you can't base your entire life off the opinions of other people because you'll probably be let down 99% of the time if you do that base your life off of your endeavors and your aspirations and you'll find happiness a lot faster that way so hope that answered your question great question next question how do you define success i i think i define success a little bit differently than most people i think success i define as Notoriety, you know, for example, Mike Tyson is the definition of success. Muhammad Ali, definition of success. The names are world renowned. Everyone knows who they are. Having this status of just being a household name is how you know you've truly succeeded. Everyone knows Jeff Bezos. You might love him or you might hate him. I'm sure a lot of people hate him, but you know him and you know his name. Someone says Jeff Bezos, you think, oh yeah, Amazon, boom. And that's success right there once you're a household name because say amazon were to just for whatever reason die tomorrow and amazon's completely gone we still knew who jeff bezos is if jeff bezos were to just go open up a new company people would probably flock to that company and try and buy shares in it or try and invest into it because his name is so renowned that anything he touches would probably succeed so that's what i think success is i think success is having such an impact on something in a field that you're just world renowned for it so yeah, I hope that answered your question. I'm going to wrap it up because I feel like I've been talking for an hour. I don't know how long this video is. So last question is, do you enjoy working always on the same style, meaning black backgrounds, lightings, etc.? Good question. Um, the answer is I do enjoy it, but I'm also at the point where I want to try new things again, which is why I'm shooting film. Um, but essentially, I've developed like my own style and that style need certain things to achieve and i feel like once you do your own style you you know you're probably you're like addicted to it and you want to do it a lot but like all things you kind of get bored of it and i'm at the state where i'm kind of bored of it and i do enjoy the kind of work that i do now but there's only so much i can do with it so i'm definitely trying to expand my photography to new like creative ideas and whatnot so hope that answered your question but with that question being answered i'm going to wrap up this q a i have like 50 other questions i still need to answer so um, if you guys want to see more questions and you want to ask some questions yourself let me know in the comment section below i will be doing another i'll probably be doing a part two of this sometime just because there was so many questions and you guys really sent a lot more questions than i thought you guys were going to send so that's really awesome i love when you guys interact with my prompts on instagram and on twitter and stuff like that so uh if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to like and subscribe if you guys have any questions you want me to answer in future videos leave them in the comment section below and if you guys want me to make a part two where i answer more questions also let me know in the comment section below so with that being said i'm gonna wrap up this video make sure you follow me on all social media platforms all my usernames are at moody darkroom follow me on instagram twitter tiktok you already know the deal but with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next one.